Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's 2017, I hope you're having a good year. I sure am. I'm having to remake videos that were supposed to be last month but got corrupted. So what I'm gonna do is immediately phone it in. Uh, we got our little script right here, we're just gonna go. So with this channel we talk writing and we talk storytelling and what this little series is is going to be tools of the trade that you can use to help your writing uh, and hopefully help your storytelling. But hey, no guarantees. Uh, basically, if we're gonna just sum it all up, is you can write on whatever you want. Writing is one of the easiest, most affordable uh, hobbies or professions you can do because we all have a computer. That's what you're watching on here. Uh, you got Word or you can use LibreOffice and you can just start typing. But uh, like writing is sort of a combination of concepts that you build into a house. It's easier to build your house when you have all the necessary tools to make your life just a little bit nicer. And that's what we're going to be covering today. We are going to be covering, and it's a long one, Habit HVKB366L Blue Switch Mechanical Keyboard. I am not going to say that each time, but basically we're just going to be covering Mechanical Keyboard using the Mechanical Keyboard I bought about two years ago and is my mainstay. It's what I like to write on, especially now that I've moved everything to the desktop. And here are the reasons why. So how did I intro this? Why should you want a mechanical keyboard? Well, for a couple of reasons. But if you're used to using your old stay, you know what? Look at this thing. It's my old Logitech keyboard. I wrote the Dragon's Tear, and I believe I wrote most of the hunt on this thing, uh, and quite a few Wildstar stories off this old keyboard, and probably a couple of other projects that died and we're not talking about anymore. And that is a membrane keyboard. It's very good, it's very fun. Um, and you can pick them up at like Walmart for 20 bucks, especially if you want the, uh, the mouse attachment. But with mechanical keyboards, it can be just as affordable, maybe not as affordable as $20. So what makes these old membrane keyboards so affordable? Well, we shift everything off to China and China uses the cheapest materials and that way we get the lowest prices when you go to your Walmarts and your Targets and your Best Buys and whatnot. Uh, and your membrane keyboards, uh, if I'm not going to open this one up, I might have to use it in case anything bad ever happens. That is going to be my backup. Uh, basically, it's a membrane mesh that you type your keys, and eventually those things wear out, as do most things in life. And they'll wear out after about two to three, all the way up to about five million key presses. Uh, and these are not words. For whatever reason, people just confuse words with character presses and your character presses for a novel can be half a million uh, my uh, I know the hunt came out with well over 400,000 uh, the very first draft and my Wildstar novellas are almost always over a hundred thousand characters a piece uh, so you can see in a couple years and especially your main keys your ASDF JKL are going to get used up first uh, not so with mechanical keyboards with mechanical keyboards, and I'm going to use the Habit for an example, although it's a little bit different, a mechanical keyboard can go anywhere between 45 to 50 million key presses. Uh, I'm going to do some math, probably up over here on the side, so you can see exactly what that can turn out to. Basically, your mechanical keyboard is going to be a long-term investment, and it's just going to be a little bit pricier um, as a result. Now, most of the keyboards are very new. Uh, you're gonna have all the old stuff you want, but there are so many different kinds of mechanical keyboards. If you want your macro keys, if you want it for gaming, if you want it for writing, there are different mechanical switches. And what that basically means is you get two different kinds of feedback when you have a mechanical switch. It can be uh, auditory or it can be tactile. So a tactile is there is a bump in the mechanical keyboard. And let me actually show you. I got one of these bad boys. We're gonna bring it up in just a minute again. Um, this is basically a, a switch tester. So you got your greens, clears, reds, blacks, browns, and blues. Uh, and they all have different auditory and tactile feeling. Uh, if you have your reds, you have no tactile feeling and no sound. So it's gonna be nice and quiet. Uh, whereas with a blue right here, see if we get that. With a blue, you're gonna get a click, and you're also gonna get a bump at the actuation point, and this is when your key actually registers onto your computer, which is different from your membrane keyboard, where you have to go all the way down. 
Not so with the blue key. Or actually most of them. Uh, the reds, you just don't know where it is. But it's usually about the halfway point. So the nice thing with all these different kinds of switches is if you have the tactile feedback and you know when you hit the actuation point, you are applying less pressure onto your fingers and you are typing faster. I have done several tests using a membrane keyboard and my mechanical keyboard and I type way faster with the mechanical uh, and not by doing anything different by just using the keys and I'm using uh, blue switch keys so you get auditory and you get tactile. So. Along with auditory, if you want that click, if you want that old kind of typewriter sound, uh, blues are going to be great. Uh, so are greens. Browns, not so much. It has a very definite, you can kind of hear it, um, but you're mostly feeling it. Not so with reds or blacks, uh, or clears, I believe. So what's nice with the blue keys is you can hear it like a typewriter, so you know when to stop pressing, uh, especially if you can't feel it or you're just typing really fast. You'll get used to that rhythm of the clicks and the clacks, and I don't know what it is, but I find myself more inspired. I've done writing groups where everyone sort of sits and you're listening to the laptops type away, and for whatever reason, you just kind of zone in. Uh, it's sort of like a really nice background noise to help you write. I'm sure they are not going to put that on the box as a selling point, but hey, that's what I'm telling you. So I remember when I talked about the Havit keyboard being a little bit different. Well, when we talk mostly about mechanical switches, people are going to think about Cherry MXs. Uh, and this is actually what these are. These are all Cherry MXs. And about uh, two or three years ago, the patent or the trademark, something on top of it, um, expired. So Cherry isn't the only one who makes uh, mechanical switches. So we get a lot of Chinese and certain European brands, I believe, but I believe they're mostly uh, Chinese knockoffs. Uh, that's not nice to say they're not knockoffs, but they are pretty nice. I know Razer and uh, Havit use these. Uh, they are Guatu. I'm, I'm going to just put the name up because I'm not going to deal with pronouncing it. But these are different kinds of mechanical keys uh, that will actually last a little bit longer. They will actually last um, anywhere between 55 to 65 million uh, character presses before you have to replace them um, compared to your 45 to 50 million, uh, which is, you know, if that's going to be a big thing for you, you're honestly going to lose out on your uh, cable right? Your USB cable or whatever, before you're going to run out on these switches, and that is writing all the time. So how do you know which mechanical switch is right for you? Well, I'm going to recommend picking this up. You can pick these up on Amazon. Um, I really can't find any store nearby that sells these, uh, although Best Buy will usually have the Razer line or the Corsair lines of keyboards, uh, and you'll or Logitech. Logitech has uh, black switches. Corsair will usually talk about its reds, and so is Razer's. Um, so if you go to a Best Buy, go to this, their display, you can actually feel them out. Uh, but this is going to be the best way for you to figure out what sound and what tactile feeling you want. That's a terrible, but we're not going to stop because you don't know. I mean, I've seen lots of YouTubers go ahead and they'll put their microphone really close and they'll, they'll click it but you just won't know and you just won't know what type of feeling you want. Uh, the habit is a little bit different. Um, it says it's blue keys, but if you pick this up and you compare it with the habit, uh, their blue keys are a little bit different because they are not Cherry MX. Uh, they are somewhere that is a mix between greens and blues. Um, they kind of have a feeling of the greens, but more of the sound of the blues, and that's just basically uh, the amount of pressure you have to press down. I really like them. I don't think there's a big enough difference for you to get uh, too bent out of shape if you pick this up and you're hoping which one it is. Uh, if you like one, you're probably going to like the other. But maybe you are working or maybe you're in a house and you don't want to make a lot of noise and that is where your reds and your blacks, I know Logitech has the uh, black keys, which gives more of an actuation force on the blacks, less so on the reds. Uh, they feel really mushy. Or maybe you like the feeling, but you don't want the sound, and that's where you can go for the browns. Um, they're only about $10, $15. Well worth the money, especially because you're going to be paying uh, anywhere between $40 to $200 per mechanical keyboard, unless you're going to go for those old-fashioned spring uh, keyboards. 
So what am I going to recommend for writers? Uh, probably blues or greens, because it, it will resemble more of a typewriter, and we are hipsters like that, that's why we write. Now, the habit itself is going to run you anywhere between $90 to $100, uh, depending on the sale. I know MSRP is usually $100 off Amazon. Uh, you'll usually find Amazon takes $10 off. Uh, you can usually pick this keyboard up for about $80 to $90, but if there's a sale, you can even pick it up for $60. So if it's Prime Day or if it's Black Friday, they usually have a sale going on. Uh, and that's pretty affordable, especially for this type of mechanical keyboard. It is RGB uh, because gamers have figured things out and they like their colors, right? They figured out that they're on their keyboard all the time, they need to be the most comfortable, and they want pretty lights that they're never going to look at because they're looking at their computer screen, but hey, you might want pretty lights, so why not? Uh, there are other brands, uh, other Razors and Corsair keyboards that usually have no backlight or a backlight. Um, for, you know, 40 to $70, 70 at most with a nice backlight. Now the reason I like RGB is of course to impress all my friends who come over to watch me write. Uh, but for the most part is all the different features, you're gonna see a lot of really cool features, whether it is the, uh, the regular rainbow that's running around, or the breathing effect, or that you're typing on it, and you know, the keyboard is, has no backlight, but every time you hit the keys, uh, the key sector keeps hitting a different color for each character press. Um, or what I usually do is set it to uh, like a light blue or a uh, gray or a red and kind of dim it down for nights because uh, it's a nice, easy color on your eyes. And you can see all your keys, and that is very nice, especially if you just want to mix it up and you don't want your usual, uh, like, orange or white backlight. Now, other than that, right, look at this. We went through all of this so much better. Uh, build quality. Build quality left with the have it is very good. It actually feels quite like a premium keyboard for an affordable price. I'm sure they're gonna put that on a box somewhere, but really it does. Uh, there are like $170, $180 keyboards that feel quite the same as the uh, Have It. It doesn't have uh, some of the nicer features with those $180, $170 keyboards. Uh, they'll usually have uh, like USB ports or macro keys. This is kind of your standard uh, mechanical keyboard where you got your little number pad and all of that. Uh, it's pretty standard because I'm not using those macros or anything for gaming. Even though I game on that, it took a while to get used to. Really, for the habit, you're buying it for the price, uh, you're buying it for the RGB, and you're buying it for uh, the build quality. It's very strong. It's going to last you uh, more time than it deserves, right? Uh, the USB cable is going to go bad before these keys go bad if the 55 to 60 million character presses holds true. But if not, you can always, you know, uh, rip those things out and put new uh, mechanical switches in there. Be careful, but I believe they are uh, compatible with Cherry MX. I am not going to search for that. So that's going to be it for this writer's survival guide. Pick up a mechanical keyboard. Really, uh, it's a night and day difference. Hey, I love my Surface 3. I love this little keyboard that they bring with it. Uh, good stuff from Microsoft, but I just can't beat how much more enjoyable it is to uh, sit at my desktop and crank out 1,000, 2,000 words. And you know what? Even just typing on it, uh, just going to your Google and your Facebook and all that, it just feels more enjoyable with a mechanical keyboard, and you're not going to have to worry about replacing it anytime soon at a pretty good price. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this episode of Writer Survival Guide. There's gonna be an affiliate link in the description. Uh, check it out, or I'll actually put a few more links um, for the, the Logitechs and the Corsairs and the Razors that also look pretty good uh, from affordable to premium. See if you wanna check those out. Anyways, that's gonna be it for me, and I will see you all later.